In the early days of the solar system, the Earth wasn't exactly what you'd call hospitable. Not only was our planet super hot and geologically active, but big space rocks were constantly pummeling the surface. Oh, and there really wasn't any oxygen in the atmosphere either, which a lot of life needs to well, live. But this was the Earth that the earliest microorganisms called home, so they had to make do with what they had. Many survived by eating rocks, and some of those rocks may have fallen from the sky. Microbes that get by on an all-rock diet are still around today. They're called lithotrophs, which is basically Greek for rock eater. Sometimes scientists aren't very creative when they name things. But they also aren't totally literal. When we say these microbes eat rocks, we don't mean they're chewing on chunks of stone with adorable microscopic mouths. Instead, lithotrophs are able to kickstart chemical reactions that free up electrons from inorganic compounds, especially those containing iron and phosphorus. They use these electrons and other basic ingredients to make ATP, the same molecule that we humans use to generate energy for our cells. And once they have the energy they need, lithotrophs can use any carbon atoms in the area to build their cellular components. So all the ancient microbes needed to survive was the right rock. And for a lithotroph, hungry for carbon and various metals, there are few options more appetizing than basalt, which is often found in lava flows and and in meteorites. But could a rock that's fallen from space actually make for a healthy meal? Back in 2018, a team of scientists ran some tests to see how well certain microbe species could grow on a type of high-carbon meteorite. They wanted to see if these meteorites alone were nutritious enough to grow and sustain a whole colony, and if meteorite buffets could impact which species were more successful. Now, meteorites don't provide the same kind of meal all the time. After they slam into Earth, they're relatively pristine, if a bit broken. But over time, nearby geologic activity might warm them up and change their chemical makeup in the process. That change might make them less edible, so the team tested the meteorite's microbe hosting abilities under two conditions, heat-treated and not heat-treated. The heat-treated and then recooled sample represented a meteorite that had been fried by volcanic eruption or lava flow. Both samples were submerged in water so the microbes would have to grow in an environment free of oxygen gas, similar to what they would have had to do billions of years ago. After 10 days, the scientists found that the untreated rocks could grow an entire stable colony of microbes. The heat-treated sample, however, became not just inedible, but toxic, killing the whole colony in just over a week. So if an early microbe species had stumbled upon a charbroiled meteorite, it was out of luck. But if its potential new food source was untouched by the intense heat of a young planet, it had a shot at being the next big thing in early Earth biology. That being said, meteorite lunches probably didn't decide the entire fate of life on our planet. Earth had a variety of food for lithotrophs to feast on, so while meteorites may have been a welcome option, the rocks that were already there likely had more of an impact on which organisms got to evolve past the microbe stage. So why do we even care that early microbes could eat meteorites? Well, for starters, we're not the only planet with the potential for life. There's a good chance that in some other star system, the native rocks are a lot less appetizing. They might have been subject to even more heat treatment than the ones on Earth, or had a less nutritious chemical composition. And if that's the case, any lithotrophs trying to survive on that planet would need to rely more on meteorites. In other words, space debris could have had a lot more say and whether or not rock-eating life could get a foothold on another world. A little closer to home, knowing how lithotrophs interact with meteorites can help researchers preserve existing meteorite samples for future study. Humans might be able to use these microbes to break down rocks on Mars to create farmable soil. There's even the possibility lithotrophs could be used in asteroid mining. The space-focused study of rock-munching microbes is fairly new, so new that we don't yet know all the ways we'll apply findings in the field. Researchers will just have to keep digging. The universe has some pretty cool ways that different parts of itself can work together, be it microbes and space rocks affecting how life develops, or our wonderful viewers around the world who all team up to help us make these videos. We wouldn't be here without you. And if you'd like to learn about ways you can help support everything we do here, head on over to patreon.com slash scishowspace.